thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Um, for today, uh, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can okay. hear clearly. All right. Okay, that's good because I'm using a free Wi-Fi right now. Oh, all right. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm in overseas right now, so I hope um, we can catch up some time now for this. Okay, for today, we will uh, discuss a bit about my research about how to teach online. Okay, I have conducted and, oh, sorry, I have developed an instructional design for full online learning during the COVID-19 time, and it has been published in the BMC Medical Education. So this is the research where it also been published together with my colleague, Parayawan Yunus, and also my supervisor, Dr. Chung Changpung and Hong Wei Han, and also my colleague in UPM, uh, Parameswari Subramaniam. So, what is this research about? Okay, this is the summary. Maybe it will be too wordy for this. We try to go about it in detail. So, first of all, we need to think, okay, we as an academic, and that make us also an educator. So we are educationists, right? Are you sure that we are actually educationists? Okay, because many of this literature shows that higher institutions, educators are lack of competence in teaching and learning. Because lecturers are mostly not being formally qualified. We do not have any degree in education. We have a degree in our own profession and then we become a lecturer. We receive just a bit and uh, small parts of teaching and learning methods and approaches, but we are not properly trained into this. Then we also need for an instructional design because as an educator, we need to effectively teach and make our students learn better. So how to use it? First of all, we can borrow from the education a discipline in general. But if we look back, the health professions education actually different than other disciplines. We need to instill any clinical skills inside our teaching and learning, including in our theory teaching. So that makes us as health professions education different than other disciplines. The third thing is, Online learning has been established for decades. So why we need for a new um, instructional design then? But many of the instructional designs, for example, we can see the Gapney nine steps of instructional designs, Mayer approach in multimedia learning. It's been investigated not as online learning as a mainstream practice in education um, uh, practice. In addition, many of the research conducted in online learning focus on a small scale or interest prone. That's been the investigator has some bias. The investigators actually uh, do a research that properly made, do the online teaching that properly made. But when we look in the COVID-19 context, actually many of the practitioners are not prepared and the research actually come ad hoc. So by that, this motivate me because I feel disconnected or I feel an empty hole with my student during the teaching and learning. And then the student achievement also, even though they're quite okay, but there is a trend of stagnant in terms of their skill, in terms of their knowledge also. Okay. The third thing, is, the students also voice about the limitation they experience during the learning. And the fourth thing is actually we as educators, we feel helpless because we cannot help our students to learn more by doing any other approaches because we are really limited and constrained with the online learning. As previously mentioned, there are several instructions in design, but not specifically for online learning. And then even in the allied health system, it's distinct than the medicine, where for example, in nursing and other allied health, impose a semester-based system compared to the medicine impose the block system. This again give dissimilarities to actually directly adopt 
from whatever we have from the uh, previous literature or existing literature. And COVID-19 really has shifted our landscape of education. But we believe this practice, because it's available now, it will remain afterward. Full online learning is a bit different than other online learning or other learning approaches. Because full online learning make it online learning as main and only approach for the teaching and learning. However, the other approaches are more uh, can use online learning only as a complementary or supplemental approach. Because the online learning is just as a main and only approach, it has limited option for other alternative approach. For example, during the COVID-19, we cannot do any physical teaching, face-to-face -face teaching, and we cannot do any uh, clinical placement during that time. Other learning uh, approaches have options for other alternatives. And most of the online learning literature has been investigated with the major learners. When involved with major learners, they have the pre-existing knowledge. So when we teach them online, for example, when you do the online and distance learning, they can actually imagine. They can use their previous knowledge to relate and come back with their new knowledge. But for the COVID-19 time, this online learning has been used fully with the undergraduate students with which they do not have experience yet, and it has been used in a mass uh, scale. So that's why we need to find for us instructional design suitable for them. How to do it? The first thing I use the qualitative study design. It in, implies two methods, the focus group discussion and also the in-depth interview. Why qualitative design? Because qualitative design really can catch a rich element of information and data than other quantitative design. That's why I use the qualitative design. I conducted it one in, it in one public university with the undergraduate nursing students because the nursing students uh, can become a model for other allied health students because all of them are using the semester base. Nursing student has the clinical placement, but nursing student has the highest uh, burden of clinical placement, which is more than 2,000 hours compared to other profession perhaps 1,000 hours, for example, uh, biomed around 500 hours or 800 hours. So they are the highest burden, even though they have the similar burden of theory learning. So they, they are the good example and model. So I use the data analysis uh, on terms of thematic analysis using the QDA Mining Lab software. And by doing that, I managed to interview more than 20 students from all the cohort from year one year two year three and year four and then by that i combine their information and i develop this this is what we found this model is an i model why i use i because i we are seeing all the scopes available here there are three things needs to be considered here First thing is the life thing. The second thing is the education. And the third thing is the catalyst for them to be, uh, to learn. Okay. During the COVID-19, we know that full online learning has actually impact on life. What's it? Okay. It's about life. Study is not just about education. It's not a separate thing. Actually, it's part of life. So during the COVID-19, it has blurred division on education and personal. Means, during your, when you learn online, at the same time, you are actually a child at the house. At the same time, you are actually a sister at the house. So you need to also involve your role in that um, aspect also. Then, this also creates a non-conducive environment for learning. Spending more times for the online learning creates a uh, poor health and well-being. They have shorter attention span. They have more chance to get migraine and also uh, myopia. 
But human is an adaptable being. This is what we learn. We can adapt with what challenges and difficulty we face. In other things, the online learning has really taken part of their life. Means life as a student, life to be socialized with their friend, life to be involved in the orientation day, that's also gone. And we need to consider that during the full online. The second thing about the education, full online learning is actually medium of teaching and learning delivery, but with the several concerns. The first thing is the boot and bane of full online learning. There is a fine line between the advantage and the advantages. Okay. So if the online learning is misuse in certain aspect it will become the disadvantages if it used properly it will become the advantage even though in the same thing for example we have the recordings for the online learning this is a good element for division for this but in the same time this make the student not really give attention during the class because they can refer back to the recordings for example, another example is online learning is flexible. They can uh, attend to the class anywhere. They can attend to the class anytime. But in the same time, because it's too flexible, it makes them unable to differentiate between the education life and also the personal life. For example, they attend the learning in the car. Another things we need to consider about the uh, online learning is about challenges associated with the full online learning. Online learning has been widely reported that it creates shorter attention span and also it cannot develop the technical and soft skill properly. This also creates another thing. The good things is it also creates the coping strategy. Because of the challenges and difficulties happen, the students create the coping strategies. For example, they prepare early with their equipment, facility at their home, and also they are doing small activities inside. The third thing needs to give attention is about the educators themselves. Even though we are doing online learning, actually, it is a medium. So, whatever available in the physical, we need to adapt it into online learning. Educators need to play a major role where they need to be empathy, supportive, and also need to have a good skill in pedagogy. Second, they need to know which approach to use better during the online learning. Synchronous do from the feedback it mentioned that synchronous is more if uh, better than the asynchronous second they need equal amount of active learning and also guided learning means the didactic lecture it cannot be that the didactic lecture has to be the major approach or the active learning as the major approach they consider it as not effective the third thing is to use the technology efficiently. So it needs to investigate and explore more on the technology. For example, the use of VR or serious game, for example. During the online learning, there are also several motivations and regulation available for the student. They have the motivation from the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, similar with the physical learning, for example, wants to pass their study, want to make the family proud, want to make themselves better person in the future. Okay. But they also have some self-regulation self aspect. For example, they believe that online learning really needs them to be self-disciplined and to have better time management. Because of that, we need to help them. By doing it, I developed this instructional design where there are three elements. The first one, activities in teaching and learning. 
The second one is the quality of the educators. And the third one is the health and well-being element. If you can see the arrow above, the black arrow, that's actually the health and well-being. Supposedly, in every half, at least half an hour, we have a break together with the activities for health and well-being. For example, I exercise, stretching, or chair exercise. Second, the activities in teaching and learning being divided into three things. The first thing is the pre-class, means we need to prepare early. We need to upload um, whatever material we have in the learning management system and announce it to them. During the class, what we need to do is like this. It's been divided. First, we have some activities for them to, uh, to help them recall, okay. The second one, lecture, didactic learning. The third one, we have some activities to reinforce the lecture. Then we need to provide the feedback in the same time, okay, about the activities. Perhaps we do some uh, group activity and then we provide uh, with the uh, feedback. We, we have a quiz on the today topic, then we continue back with some lecture and also discussion. Make to have the two way communication with the student. Okay, even though it being shown in linear, but it can, uh, it does not mean that you need to follow it prescriptively. Okay, this can be altered a bit, but the amount is like this. Perhaps the lecture is a bit more. Okay, compared to the activities, a bit less. And then we conclude it. Post class, we need to upload the recording because this has been emphasized by the student that really helpful. So during these activities, what we need to do as an educator, okay, during the pre-class, you need to stick with the regular uh, schedule time, inform early, and also you need to upload the material and everything, okay. During the online class, what you need to do, you need to have the skill to teach. You need to have the empathy. You need to have also the, the, the tone of your uh, lecture okay, to make it interesting for them to give attention. Okay? And also have some pedagogy skills. What we want to do in the short period of time, some active learning. Okay. Sorry, it hang. Okay, this is the example of what I do uh, during my teaching in that time. Okay, uh, for example, I do some survey and also have some health and well-being activities, doing the exercise and everything. Perhaps I will show you a, a video better. No need for this one. This oh, sorry, this one for example is about. For you to know and aware when you can break and also teach the student to use this to help them soothe their eyes and also to reduce the eye strain, for example. So it will come out with the uh, warnings to tell students or the time you need to take a break and then, yep, time to take a break, for example. Okay, these are some of the uh, activities can be done. Okay, this also using the technology to help them learn better and make it more interactive and rich and meaningful. For example, we use the serious game here. Okay, where the students will play game and then they will uh, discuss together on what happened with your answer. For example, this is a game. So, sorry. So they will need to choose the answer. I will give in the poll F. So they will need to choose the answer. The majority of them answered one of it and I will choose it. So and then it will respond. Either they are doing it correctly or not. For example, if it's choose uh, 
For example, if they this they not doing a good answer, you will get the feedback. So it's more interactive for them. Okay. Okay, so this is one of the example. Okay, so that's one of the example. We have another example, but I think uh, we try to continue. Oops, sorry. Okay. So, what we found from here? Okay, when we do that, okay. Actually, our finding is similar with the eight element of enablers and also barriers of e-learning. Okay, being mentioned in the previous literature, and also. We found out that cognitive learning theory is really emphasized in here, where we need to reduce extraneous load, cognitive load. We need to emphasize the germane load, and intrinsic load is really covered by didactic lecture. So the more the, uh, the instructional design developed um, from my research has really helped on this cognitive learning theory. This also shows um, full online learning as we know that it take greater tool to the students. They have headache, they also have poor well-being, for example. And my module, um, sorry, my instructional design really helped to reduce that impact. The third thing is <clears throat> the instructional design actually being developed also again by taking into several theories inside. For example, the self-determination theory or self-regulated theory, Zhu and Kaplan theory of multimedia use, and also the Scholzberg adaptation theory, where human, we can adapt. At the first, we feel a bit stress and anxiety, and it makes us um, want to reject online learning. But by doing that instructional design, it can reduce the impact and can help the students or learners and also the educators to quickly adapt. Okay. So this has created a contemporary and structured uh, teaching and learning for online learning. And also it provides a health and well-being element. And also it also reduces the lecture burden for the lecture, uh, educators, especially on the online learning. Okay. We know it can be used during the online uh, COVID-19 and it believe can be used after that. So by doing this, I know this is just a theory, a model. It perhaps is not yet fully investigated, but we are now uh, currently writing for an experiment study and we found a very 
um, significant findings on the satisfaction of the students on this instructional design. By that, I would like to thank all uh, because hearing my lecture and we can discuss this further. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hibat.